Uh, you guys are basically on the road for about two hours without much eventful happening. Um, the, the trip is relatively comfortable. Um, you don't really feel at any point like there's really any danger. Every once in a while, you'll hear the captain come over the radio as you feel a kind of maybe unplanned, quick jerking motion of direction as they appear to maybe swerve uh, very, very violently for a moment or all of a sudden take kind of a sharp turn a little faster than maybe they meant to. Um, and you would guess that these are incidents where something occurred, you know, something they had to take some action about. Um, but each time the captain comes over the loudspeaker a few moments afterward and says, everything's fine, the trip continues uh, unabated. And uh, with that, the speaker goes dead and the trip just goes on. Um, about two hours pass, uh, again, relatively uneventfully. Does anybody want to do anything in that intervening time? During my whole two hours, I am, I close my eyes and I'm meditating. Okay. As you do, you're definitely thinking more and more about ways that you want to improve your martial arts. Um, you're starting to realize that the encounter that you just had in uh, the power plant, it makes you realize that you want more tools at your disposal. Okay. And so you're starting to consider um, different paths that you may wish to take in order to achieve that. Um, let's see. Anybody else doing anything? I'm going to be cleaning off the uh, pieces of scrap that I had found and kind of looking through them and seeing what I can do with them, see if anything stands out as particularly useful. Um, and then I'm going to be... Um, uh, Opening up, uh, I'm beginning working on maybe an, uh, an enchantment for um, uh, blinding flash um, into uh, the drone if possible. Okay, you start working on some rough schematics on your ARM computer, um, and you make a little bit of progress. You definitely get a little bit of the way there. You start coming up with some concepts and the spell chains and combinations that you want to use as well as, you know, some of the circuit layouts and, and just general design that you're interested in. Um, and Ymir, anything? You see Ymir Wo is... Wotek is snoring. He's, he's Yeah, I, I figured as much. Uh, I figured as much. That's what he was after. <laughs> uh, you sound annoyed. You sound a little annoyed. I mean, it's, it's, brother, it's a brotherly annoyed. You know how it is. I get you. You, you, I get you know you. how it is. There's a push and a pull. There's uh -huh. a push and a pull. You got to walk with a bear. There's some, you know, you just got to deal with a few things yeah. every once in a while. Yeah. We all but, got our yeah, money. You be, yeah, exactly. Mine just happens to be a big <laughs> mega damage bear that's, you know, got a mind of his own. That's fine. It's my bear cross to bear, I guess. But... Yeah, Ymir is sitting in quiet contemplation, um, maybe going over what he studied last night in his head. He's got his eyes shut. You know, of course, he's still got his hand on his maul, so he's not completely out of it. But he's definitely taking this moment to uh, reflect, refocus his energy, kind of let go of some of the, the darkness that gripped him from previously... Uh, the day before and all the amazing shit that his mind can't even really comprehend with Pilgrim and everything where he was just kind of flabbergasted taking in the situation because he's never seen anything like that. So yeah, Ymir is just basically in a, a, a warrior trance, but also contemplating his, uh, the runes and uh, smithing on to see what kind of projects he might be able to come up with. Okay, sounds good. Um, one of the yeah. methods that your uh, Kuznia brothers use is to kind of do a visualization technique of mm -hmm. uh, future projects, and mm -hmm. you're, you're easily able to slip into this kind of mantra, and you're able to make some progress. So, um, okay, cool. We'll kind of come back to that. Um, Excellent. 
And okay, two hours go by very, very quickly. You guys arrive, and as you do, give me two seconds. I want to make sure this is all set up for everybody. Okay, and then we're just going to go like that. And let me kill the grid, and I'll move you guys over. Okay, so as you guys uh, arrive and the back hatch uh, drops as the vehicle pulls to a close and you hear some off venting of gases and such, um, you hear the loud squeal of the brakes locking into place, and as you get out of the rear hatch, uh, Wotek slowly yawns himself awake and pop, uh, plods out. Uh, with you guys, um, as you all filter out, you that, see this in the background. That's good to hear. Not this time. That's good to hear. I'm <laughs> glad about that. Um, you guys see this in front of you. Everybody can see the monastery, yes? Uh, um, I see no. the wasteland-looking water thing. I don't... Yeah, I see a black square. That's it. Well, yeah, I don't see anything now. I see a black square. A black square? Give me just one second. Hmm. Well, why don't we very quickly? This doesn't let me. Oh, let me check something real quick. Okay, can you guys see anything? I see the uh, like a the, villa yeah. on a action. Okay, excellent. Okay, sorry, the dynamic lighting was turned on, and for some reason that made it. Yeah. Okay. Um. So as you guys pile out, you're able to see uh, this monastery built into a cliffside high up on this kind of mesa. There's this extra little nipple of rock that sticks right out of the middle, uh, giving it extra height. And you see that crowning right at the top is is that beautiful monastery. Um, you see there's several different structures kind of hidden away in the foliage up there. Um, and it's hard to really discern a whole lot of detail from this distance. Um, but there are definitely people uh, that appear to be coming and going. Most of them uh, appear to be in what you can see is just simple garments. Um, that you would guess are kind of going just to pay their respects. There's not nearly this many people. You'd say you could probably see probably four or five people ascending uh, stair paths and things uh, and milling about, um, but the numbers are relatively small. Um, as you uh, look around, you see that in front of you at the base of the mesa, there is... Uh, a opening in the rock face that looks like this. Um, the opening appears pretty ornately adorned and obviously is ancient, um, but this is what you would guess people have called the steps, and it looks as though this might actually ascend all the way up to uh, the top of the mesa and then on into the monastery itself. Um, you see that Pilgrim and Harmony immediately turn and start uh, heading into the opening in the wall um, and are joined by several of the individuals that were in the vehicle earlier. Um, it looks like maybe four or five different uh, residents of the settlement that you were just at uh, are kind of joining on the pilgrimage up to the monastery. Um Everybody want to file in and start heading up? Your vehicle is still loaded, by the way. Do you want to have it unloaded, or do you want to leave it in the transport? I'll I'll pull it out in case we need to do something. Okay. They have no problem with it at all. They just insist on loading it and unloading it. So as they pull it out, he hop, the, the mechanic hops right out and, you know. I don't even know if you have keys for it necessarily, but, you know. 
Um, is the environment around this entryway lush and green like it is in your illustration? As you look around, it is indeed. Uh, it's pretty temperate. Everything is, is, you know, the sun feels warm. You guys aren't really having a whole lot of cloud cover. Um, but it it's this area actually feels like um, it is free of the pollution that you were uh, sensing around Sinner's Cove. Um, the air is clean and fresh. Um, you guys are getting a nice uh, kind of uh, lake spray that you're you're not really getting moisture, but you can still smell that really brisk air sweeping off of the lake in the distance. Um, and uh, let's see. You also notice that there's lots of animal and plant life that looks native to Earth itself in the area. Um, and things feel relatively uncorrupted and, and Earth-like in, in origin instead of, you know, a kind of more alien environment. Um, the day is actually beautiful. It's warmed up quite a bit. Um, you'd say that the temperature is, you know, somewhere in the low 70s. And um, let's see. Making As... all of this in the environment. Uh, Ymir turns to Wotek uh, and speaks to him and says, See, brother, even here, Aku's influence holds strong. Lord Vidar would be proud. Okay, and at this, at this, Wotek nods his head in agreement and he bends low and takes a long sniff at a little patch of grass that he finds um, with a... Uh, with a small insect running through it. You guess it's some kind of small cricket. And uh, as he takes a long sniff, the cricket halfway goes up his nose and is dropped back down. He kind of sniffs and shakes his head for a second. Uh, and then he looks up at you and uh, he kind of nods again in approval. He, he definitely feels like this is a natural place. Um, you guys start uh, heading into the open... Uh Go ahead. Before before I go in, I want to go ahead and uh, take a nice 360 uh, look around. Okay. And just uh, indulge in the beautifulness of the area, and go ahead and uh, take snapshots of the opening of the side of the wall. Okay. Go ahead and mark that down that you took, uh, that you've got images of uh, the steps entrance. And I want to go ahead and just look at the, uh, I guess, figures that were created around. Uh, basically, uh, just look at the actual side a little bit more. Okay. And uh, just uh, get a feel of what these uh, monuments are. Excellent. As you take a, a look around and look for a little more detail... Um, you notice right around, right away from your Atlantean studies um, as a youth that these are indeed um, Greek statues from Earth's distant past. Um, the the images, at least, are are taken from that type of mythology, um, and the work is actually beautifully wrought. Um, this was obviously a very very profound place of power in the distant past and was revered um, by whoever built it as a literal direct connection to the gods themselves. Um, and so in this sense, you get, you get the impact and weight of how important whatever this site was, uh, was in the local area before all of the monumental effort was made to actually construct it into the mountainside itself. Um, so the locals must have really believed this was a special place. Um, Do I know how old these uh, statues are? You Not are no, but you are I'm positive sure. upon further examination that these were not made by humans and that they probably predate the human civilization by several millennia. Okay. Um, what else? You also can tell that there was probably magic used in the construction of this site, and you have a strong feeling that it may have been 
um, from an Atlantean stone master. Um, the work is too perfect. It's too artistically magnificent uh, to be from any other race uh, that you know of. And uh, you, you think that with all intended uh, kind of lack of humility, like you, as an Atlantean, you know there simply are not other artists that can work stone as, as well as your people. Um, Roger, okay. And... As I'm walking into the tunnel behind them. Okay. Um, you head on in, and as you guys enter... You all see a large wooden door of very simple make. Um, it swings open partially, and from within, a face pops out. Um, you see that it obviously has some kind of scanning device on the door um, where somebody was observing the other side from within. Apparently, your group has been identified as acceptable uh, to enter. And so this individual with uh, eerily glowing eyes and a very simple wrap surrounding their body, um, as the door opens, this individual nods once at the group and whispers to you very, very softly, practice nothing but pacifism within these walls. Enter and be counted honored guests. With this, he slowly swings the door open, revealing its massive frame. Uh, it is easily 20 feet tall, um, but he seems to move it without any effort at all. Um, he opens it wide, allowing the group to enter. And as you guys do, you see that there are truly humble uh, accommodations for what appears to be staff like him um, who maintain this facility. Uh, as you, um, his eyes, do they appear like a magical glow or is this more like a technology, like, uh, like, like, a you, energy pot word glow? You feel because you're able to discern so well betwixt the two, you feel that this is uh magic at play, if not magic, perhaps psionics. Okay. You would guess that whatever it is, it is a permanent alteration of the way that this individual perceives through his eyes. And so with that, you would guess that in a, in a strange sense, it's similar to like cybernetics or bionics um, instead of like a spell, which is almost always uh, fleeting, right? Um, okay, so as you guys enter this chamber... Um, you see that indeed these the people that you know maintain this area they live a fairly humble life although the views are beautiful um, not a lot in the way of amenities other than maybe a soft bed and some kind of humid and uh, exposed to the elements accommodations very basic um, you guys continue uh, through this small antechamber and you come to a massive internal stone uh, stairwell. Um, it appears to be at least 15 feet tall um, and 15 feet wide. It's huge. Um, and it leads up at a relatively uh, non-steep angle to accommodate those who simply do not possess much physical prowess or endurance. Um, you do see that there's a, a splinter path that appears to go off uh, to the left of the main arcing kind of spiral. And this is a bit more narrow. It's only about 10 feet tall, and it looks like it's about six feet wide. And this uh, set of stairs actually appears to be much more steep, and the stairs themselves are larger and further spaced apart. And um, your guide, that individual who opened the door, who is now ushering you forward to the stairs, explains that if you care to, um, that is a much more direct and rapid route to the top, he says, but it is much more physically challenging. Um, with this, he turns and he continues walking the main group at a pretty slow pace uh, up the, the larger set of stairs. 
Um, you guys can now decide where you want to go, but suffice to say that Pilgrim and Harmony both immediately take a hard left and start going up the, the steeper stairs. Um, what would you guys care to do? Well, it's six o'clock, so I don't know. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, why don't you, do you guys want to go ahead and follow them or would you care to go up the main side? I'm just calling it out. Yeah. It wasn't, yeah. Was oh, just no worries. No six. worries. I, I, that's a perfect place to stop. Why don't we just, we'll establish yeah. that. Um, before we stop, I'm uh, taking pictures. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. You're taking pictures as you're going through. Uh, bear, which direction would you like to go? Bear's going to wait for, or Ymir's going to wait for the consensus of the group. So I'll just hold fast until the rest of um, my companions decide. Okay. Akama? I look at Ren to see if he's physically capable to tackle these really steep stairs. I can do it all day. I got fucking robot legs, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about getting robot legs. I love it. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, everybody takes a hard left, then including. Oh, Motec. I'm gonna I'm gonna poke your mirror in the butt with a pin to see what happens if he freaks out and make breaks the violent. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you guys all take a hard left. You start heading up the more challenging stairs. It's actually a piece of cake for you, no worries. Um, but you guys start making very very rapid progress up towards the top of the mesa. Um, within probably half an hour, you guys emerge. And where we will leave it is you guys come into a finished antechamber somewhere within uh, the monastery itself where you see a very uh, uh, refined and uh, sacred place of worship. You're quickly ushered outside. And as you're ushered outside, you see... I'm sorry, you're ushered out by this individual who collects your group quickly and leads you out the front door um, without saying what a word. What is your name, kind sir? Uh, he says nothing at first and just waves your group forward. As you step out the front doors, you see that you're now facing this structure. And as you all stand there in amazement, you do in indeed see that somewhere within what appears to be this kind of cathedral-like structure, um, there must be some great source of power because the sky itself indeed is shining in that manner. You all get a profound and powerful sense that you are standing on some kind of incredibly holy site dedicated to a God who is very much present right here with you right now and with that we'll call a close to today's adventures um as always i appreciate everybody being here you guys have been a fantastic group and if anybody needs any assistance this week another kick ass you just let me know i appreciate that man i appreciate it uh i hope you guys all had a good time and uh yeah i had a blast today i'm really glad we're starting to move along quickly and man, I got some great shit to, to get you guys into. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Appreciate everybody's time. I will catch you all later and we're stopping the recording right now. And now, bow your head for the patrons. BKZJT, Rapid 3642. And Sasa. Nova Rose. Kelly T. Tommy Gunn. The Z24 Colts, Jess H. It's 
If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash homegrown lore.